Hey everybody and welcome back. This is part two of our confidence intervals for proportions and for means as well as errors and sampling distributions with Dr. Amy Gates. In part one we ended on the slide that you're looking at now and we're going to move on to doing the next example. In this next example we're going to look at how to take a small population of values how to create what's called a sampling distribution from these values. We're going to then figure out how to calculate the mean of the sampling distribution. And finally, in the end, we're going to show that the mean of the population and the mean of the sampling distribution are the same. So this is a very tiny example because these can get pretty huge. And let's see how this works. In this case, our small population of values is generated by the following. A tutoring service ran for only three days. The number of calls received by the tutoring service on each of the three days was 12 calls, 10 calls, and 5 calls. And then they left. So these three values represent our population of tutoring service calls, 12, 10, and 5. Now, if we want to create what's called a sampling distribution, what we're really doing here is we're going to grab all the possible samples, in this case of size 2, from our population, which again is very tiny. This population is only of size 3. We're going to grab from this population all the tiny little samples of size 2 that we possibly can, repeats are okay. So in other words, when we grab any of the possible samples from this population of size 2, the first one is we can have a 12 and a 12. Now you might be thinking, well, how is that possible? There's, no, there's only one 12 here. But you want to think to yourself that we're grabbing all possible samples of size 2 from these three numbers, but we can use any of these three numbers each time. So if we pick any of these three numbers the first time, we can pick a 12. And then if we pick any of these three numbers the second time, well, we can also pick a 12. That's one of our possibilities. So 12, 12 is one possible sample of size 2 that we can grab from our population. Similarly, we can pick a 12 first and then a 10. We can also pick a 12 first and then a 5. We can pick a 10 and then a 12. We can pick a 10 and then a 10. We can pick a 10 and then a 5. We can pick a 5 and then a 12, a 5 and then a 10, or a 5 and then a 5. This is an exhaustive list of every possible set of choices we can grab from our population of size 2. So there are no other possibilities. We have all of them. And if you'll notice, there are nine different possibilities here of grabbing a sample of size 2 from a population of size 3 where repeats are OK. So that's our first step. We want all of our little samples to be listed, and we want to know how many there are. So we've got that, and we know that there's nine of them. I also relisted them here so that I could easily calculate the mean of each of my little mini samples of size 2. So here's my first sample of size 2. Here's my 12, 12. It's the same as this one. The mean or the average of this little tiny sample is 12, right? Because the average of 12 and 12 is 12. The average of my second little sample, which is 12 and 10, is 11. If you don't believe me, you can add 12 and 10 together and divide by 2, and you will get 11. That's the average of 12 and 10. Similarly, for my third little mini sample of 12 and 5, the average is 8.5. So I go through all nine of these individual samples, and I calculate the average of each one. So this list is a list of all nine of the averages of all nine of my samples. All right, so what's my next step? After I have all of the possible averages, which I've listed again over here for you, these are all the possible averages of all nine of my possible samples. 
The next thing I want to do is figure out what is the probability of getting any one of these averages. Well, there's nine possible averages I can get. There's nine possibilities here. Now, there's only one 12, right? So out of all nine of these, I can only get a 12 one time. So the probability of getting an average of 12, given any of my samples, is 1 over 9. That's the probability of getting a 12. So out of all nine of these possible samples, the only one that produces an average of 12 is this top one. So out of all nine of these, the only way to get a 12 is with the top, and that's one-ninth. One-ninth or one out of the nine options. The probability of getting 11, there's actually two of those. I can get it here or I can get it here. So there's two chances out of nine or two-ninths. The probability of getting a 10, there's only one of these, so there's only one chance out of nine or one-ninth. There's two different ways to get an 8.5. Here's both of those. There's two different ways to get a 7.5. Here's both of those options. And finally, only one way to get a 5. So these values represent the probability or the number of possible ways out of 9 that I can get these particular mean values. All right, well, that's good. That actually tells me all the probabilities of my means. So the next thing I want to do, given all these probabilities, is I finally want to calculate the mean of my sampling distribution. What is my sampling distribution? It's all the different samples that I could possibly get. Here's all of my samples. And when I look at all the possible averages of these samples, which I have listed here, I can find the average of all of those possible averages. And that's the mean of my sampling distribution. How do I calculate that? Well, I multiply my value of x times the probability of getting that value, and then I add all of those products together. So what is x? Well, in my first case, x is 12. What's the probability of getting x or 12? Well, it's 1 ninth. So in my first step, I multiply my 12, which is x, times 1 ninth, which is the probability of getting a 12. Next, what's the probability of getting 11? It's 2 ninths. So I multiply my 11 by 2 ninths. What's the probability of getting a 10? It's 1 ninth. So here's my 10 times 1 ninth. The probability of getting 8.5 is 2 ninths. So here's 8.5 times 2 ninths. The probability of getting 7.5 is also 2 ninths, so that's listed here. And finally, the probability of getting a 5 is 1 ninth, and that's my last one here. Notice I took each value of x, 12, 11, 10, 8 and a half, 7 and a half, and 5, those are all my x values, and I multiplied them by the probability of getting that particular value. After I do all of these multiplications, I want to add them all together. And when I do that, I get the result of 9. So 9 is the mean of my sampling distribution. Finally, if I go back to my original population of calls, which is just 12, 10, and 5, and I find the mean of that, I divide it by 3 after adding them together, I also get a 9. And this is a proof that the mean of the sampling distribution and the mean of the original population are in fact the same. So there's a lot of steps to this example. Feel free to watch it as many times as you need to. This ends part two and I'm going to start up part three to show a few more examples.